Today's Real Life Styles where we give you the best of Barbados and all of its hidden treasures. Today we're here with Anaya Shari, the beautiful painter and artist behind these amazing pieces of work. Anaya, tell us about some of your artwork, how you got started, mm -hmm. and just your brain. Because it's <laughs> all on these beautiful paintings. Yes, yes. So um, I would have gone to Harrison College, uh -huh. and so I did art at Harrison College for two years, mm -hmm. um, but then I got a swim scholarship, and then I ended up going to the U.S. for school. Okay. And so I went to boarding school, and then college, and then my master's. But initially, um, my dad and my granddad used to sell paintings, so I think it's just passed down generationally. Mm -hmm. um, and so, all when I was at AC, but mainly really when I got to the US. Um, creating just became a safe space for me um, because I think I was just really trying to navigate what it means to be an immigrant in the US, yeah. a black girl in the US, mm -hmm. trying to navigate a space that I really not only did not know, but did not have the language to really express like mommy and daddy this is what happening mm -hmm. or this is how I feel because at the time I was 13 so oh, <laughs> are you serious yes I left at 13 wow. I left at 13 and then my sister came the following year she also got a swim oh, scholarship nice. so she came the following year so her and I have really yes yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yes. that was most of the time when you talk to a major they tell you they can't swim. I know you live in a account, swim home. <laughs> it's so true. I congratulations to you guys. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, yeah, we came, she came the year mm -hmm. after, but um, it was just really difficult for me to really process what it meant to be there and also not having the language as a child yeah. um, because, you know, children sometimes might not have the language to express certain yes. things. Um, so during my time at Petty, which was my boarding school, mm -hmm. um, I really just keyed into the art. So painting, drawing, I was in theater. Oh, <laughs> I was really into the arts. I'm really passionate about the arts, but also using the arts as a way for me to start to heal, to find resolve, to ask questions, um, to think about myself, to er internalize all the things that I was experiencing. So it just really became a safety net for me. If I didn't have art, I don't know. I don't know what what would have happened to me. Yeah. So then I went from boarding school to um, college, and again I was doing the arts and psychology at the time because I was doing a lot of volunteering. I was volunteering in Barbados, some volunteering um, in the U.S. And so always knowing that I want to help. I don't know exactly how. how. Yeah. I don't know how this is gonna yeah. take shape. But then um, while I was at college, um, one of my professors had told me about art therapy. How about just combining the two? Yeah. You love volunteering, you love to help, um, you love to build relationships with people. How about combining the two? Is there a way that you could combine the two? And so that's when I majored in art and had a um, concentration in psychology. So this is something that is well known or- um, Well known. Did you create it? <laughs> No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is what I, well in the US is mm -hmm. well known. There are lots and lots of institutions. Mm -hmm. I applied to 10 colleges in the US. Wow. Yeah, so there are a lot of institutions okay. that do art therapy and counseling because mm -hmm. it's still under the mandate of counseling. Mm -hmm. You would still be doing talk therapy, but incorporating the arts as another means right. to help the person process whatever they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yeah, in college and then doing my master's, I was really able to hone in not only on the um, um, my need to create but also the need to really push myself to find whatever answers I was looking for and then also to translate that into working with clients mm -hmm. um, so I spent the last year of my internship working at a women's shelter and so working with women um, doing art making using clay stitching honestly any, any, anything, get your hands anything you could think about we <laughs> used and yeah. so that was just really I think Working at the women's shelter is probably like the best thing I've done in my life. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's give probably, give. yeah, that was just yeah. like remarkable to be able to work with. Why do I want to cry? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, world, all you're saying that's so beautiful. Yeah, so um, I don't think I've talked about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't want to cry, but. Um, yeah, working at the Women's Shelter was probably one of the best things that I've done up to date. Um, just 
I worked there for a year, so my final year of my master's program. You have to um, work and also do your thesis or whatever, right, yeah. whatever you're doing, whatever you choose to do. So I did my thesis and also worked at the women's shelter, which was difficult to um, navigate, <laughs> but you know, I think that it was a necessity. It was a necessity for me to do, and also I think that I was really able to also understand more of the dynamics, white patriarchy, all the things yeah. that really impressed upon black people in the US. I was really able to see the firsthand experiences because working at a women's shelter, there's a lot, there's a lot happening at all times. And so just really being grateful to have the opportunity to work with those women and to have the opportunity to also, I think, even though I was there as a therapist, um, they also impacted me yeah. so much. Um, having conversations, making art together, you know, actually being in community, because that's what it really was. Um, being in community with those women was really transformative um, for me. And um, I worked there and then at the after school program with the kids, um, and that was also very amazing. about this vast and large piece you have here. <laughs> so this piece I actually did in my junior year of college. The name of this piece is I Was Blind and Now I See. Um, I think in my junior year of college, I was really having a difficult time. I had just come back from abroad. I spent a semester in France studying art and painting. And so I had just come back from abroad and still in the process of trying to figure out my place in the US as a black woman, as an immigrant, and really trying to figure out how the two, how my Barbadian self and my American self, how to combine those two things. Cause I think that they were always at war. <laughs> um, and so this piece was really a cry out to God. That's when my arms are outstretched and I'm looking up, um, basically asking for help to be able to find my place in the world, to be able to find my place in the US and not be continually in a deep, dark depression. Um, because I think being in the US, being so far from home, um, dealing with a lot of racism and sexism and anti-immigrant hate, I think I was constantly in a battle. Um, I'm really, really struggling, um, if I'm being honest. And so, yeah, this painting is really about that negotiation. I have my arms outstretched. I have like this snake, which is supposed to symbolize evil. Um, I also have hands reaching out, but hands reaching, black hands reaching um, towards me, um, trying to pull me, <laughs> pull me out. Um, and then also the semblance of these doves as a standing for Christianity, religious iconography. Um, so really, I, I feel like this painting was really a cry out to God, but as a prayer, like I need, I need you here. I need you to help me, please. Um, and so again, as I would have spoken about, just this negotiation with me, the whatever I'm painting on. So this is wood, me, my paintbrush, and the wood and my paint really having a conversation um, about what it is I need to find and how I can find the answers through creating. Um, so yeah, this is what this piece was really, was really about. And I think after I create such huge pieces, I always feel very tired. And so <laughs> I usually take, like after I do these really big intense pieces, I did the background first and probably then like three weeks after is then when I said, okay, this is actually what I'm going to paint on this. Um, so I think also to the connection to African heritage, my ancestry, all of that would play into what I was also grappling with as a black woman in the US. Love it, love it, love it. And then behind you. Yes. I this remember because we met at the hotel festival. And yes. You said that this you one. take the, the usual Beijing paintings and mm -hmm. culture and you kind of put a spin on it. So, yes. first of all, I kind of see, for me, a mother Sally, okay. possibly. Okay. Or a grandmother, maybe. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> sorry, <that's laughs> my interpretation, but the first part of it. I know okay. a bit more about it because you told me. 
you know, if you want to watch that, you have to go watch our video. If you want to know about that, you have to watch the live video of Hotel Festival. Yes. But you can tell me about this one. Yeah, so this piece, I actually um, got the idea for this piece when I was abroad. We had visited the Louvre and my, all my professors were white. I was the only black woman in the program. And so we went to the Louvre and all the paintings that we were talking about were white people. Um, and so I was, having a diff I was having a lot of challenges with that. And then while we were walking, I saw a painting that was this painting actually I recreated the painting of a black slave and she was painted by a white woman and so I really wanted to when I returned to the US I wanted to create her as I saw her and also um, you know include you know my style my elements my bright colors um, and also you know all right for Barbados. Um, so yeah, this is what this piece is about. Definitely um, recreating her, but also including Mira. I had showcased this um, piece in a gallery with um, mainly white people. So wanting um, them to see their reflection in the mirror um, and to have that connection with, okay, this is a slave woman and she's being choked. Um, and then the standing of Miss Piggy for white patriarchy and just being done with it, honestly, just being completely done with what was happening, the racial injustice, the continual killing of black people. I was just like, I, I am exhausted mentally, physically and emotionally and really like, tell me why. I really, like I need this to change, but I also need within myself not to continually be in a place of darkness. And so really just trying to recreate, you know, she's a slave woman, but trying to recreate her and also find understanding through the painting process. Um, and so, yeah, this is what this piece is about. Uh, but I returned to Barbados. My dad actually said, hopefully my paintings could be happy. Uh, so we'll see if that changes. Um, but yeah, you know, I think that as I would have said, like using creativity as a way to process and a way to really like deal with things that you might not have language for. You know, there's not everything that we could describe or everything that we could express or explain, but there might be other means to be able to process. And so that's what a lot of my paintings are actually about. Just using art as a means to really be able to find answers, but also find a way forward. So here we have, have mercy upon me, O Jehovah, for I am in distress. This is Psalms 31, nine. Yes, so this piece, I had just experienced a loss, um, somebody who was a mother figure. Um, and again, I think being in the US had created a sense of isolation, um, being far away from my family um, and everything that I knew. Um, and so really feeling that isolation, especially when this person had passed away. Um, and really trying to grapple with that, feeling like I was just down bad. I was just, I was just, there's no other better, um, you know, eloquent way to put that, but I was just so, so sad, honestly. I can feel it. Yeah, I was just very sad and, um, I think including, you know, this is hot glue. Mm -hmm. Including the hot glue, really wanting whoever sees it to get the gravity of that pain. Like, this is just not flat tears. Like, these tears are alive. <laughs> these tears are alive. Um, and the spray paint says, I miss you all over. Oh, I, didn't I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> the small ones, but all, I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you all over in red and. Um, Oh my goodness, your brain, your thoughts all like mixed up. Yeah. And yeah. That one emotion, I miss you. I miss you. And um, yeah, really just trying to, you know, being very sad, but also again, as I said, you know, trying to find a way forward. Like, how do I even, how do you deal with grief? Honestly, how do, how do you grieve? How do you even begin to grieve? How do, how do you process the fact that somebody who is so close to you is not, is gone and is no longer here? And I think that, you know, grief and death is something that 
it's so difficult to deal with because I think that our brains don't even process the fact that like this is we're living, but then eventually we die. These pieces take a lighter, a lighter oh, okay. side. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, lighter side. Yeah. Um, these two pieces I actually did specifically for Whole Tone Festival. Oh, nice. Yes, and so this was a part of my series, Traditional Barbados Reimagined, mm -hmm. where I try to use traditional Barbadian themes, mm -hmm. but really try to push the envelope, not just you know a beach scene yeah. in our channel holes, you know? They're beautiful. They are beautiful. Oh, it's it's yes. Um, just wanting to push a little bit more. Um, and so also being true to my style mm -hmm. um, and the ways that I paint, the bright colors, the fact that things might be a little bit misplaced. Yeah. <laughs> um, so wanting to also stay true to my stylistic, the ways that I create. Um, and so this one, the name of this one is If God Was a Black Belly Sheep. Oh, cute. <laughs> and the name of this one yeah. is Monkey See, Monkey Do. Mm -hmm. So both of them demonstrating, as I said, you know, a traditional Barbadian scene. So a black belly sheep, the pride of Barbados, the black belly sheep's face uh -huh. is God. Trying to make things a little wonky, yeah. but also still trying to uh, stay true to things that you would see in everyday like mm -hmm. um, in Barbados and this one the same where I use green monkey but I kind of I guess incorporated um, human features so the monkey got a little bit of eyeshadow yeah. <laughs> a little bit of eyeshadow you know a bright smile um, very vibrant colors which is stylistically true to the things that I create so still trying to stay in my theme but to step outside of continually creating about mm -hmm. sadder things. Yeah. And I think is um, in different stages in your life, your paintings will look different. Yeah. So, you know, creating from a place of rest mm -hmm. or a place of relaxation is very different to creating from a place of pain. Yeah. Your paintings are gonna feel yeah. and look very different. So just also challenging myself, these are the smallest paintings I've had in my life. <laughs> Like life, <laughs> life. I've never worked this small, so also challenging myself to work a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. and um, also pushing the envelope of the things that I can do, mm -hmm. not just creating a book myself. So, yes. On that note, <laughs> tell us where they can find you. Yes, yes. So you can find me on Instagram at artbyanaya.246, and I post. A lot of my pieces, also these smaller pieces, you can um, DM me if you want a commission mm -hmm. um, and things like that. So just making sure that um, I'm trying to be versatile. Yeah, yeah. Trying to be yeah. versatile here. Because <laughs> I think you did you did one of the walls murals. Yes. Barbara which one was it? Sorry. Yes, uh, I have a mural actually in fashionation. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I have a mural in fashionation. Um, so yeah, I can also do murals as well. Very versatile in terms of what I'm, what what I'm able to do, but also trying to push the envelope yeah. and create things that aren't solely about yeah. myself. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but about you know other things that I'm seeing, other things that I'm in interacting with, mm -hmm. and also to the transition back to Barbados, which is yeah. a very different the work you have here. Now I'm going to say I'm very very like raw. I feel like I'm looking at something off of um, Dr. Seuss and that's what I <laughs> Yes. I love Dr. Seuss's world. Like, yes. It's just everywhere beautiful. Like, yes. Tell us about these pieces. Yeah, so these pieces, um, during my time in college, um, I would have taken all the different art mediums, so wood blocks, ceramics, okay. painting, drawing. So having to take a wide expanse, and these are actually from that time, um, and this was ceramics. So working with ceramics, and I think all of my pieces, when you see them, you're like, oh yeah, she did that. <laughs> all of them are very bright, yeah. <laughs> very bright, and things maybe are mixed together. Um, so these two actually were from a school project and she was asking us to find something in nature okay. and to create based on that. So mine was just a swirly, I think it was like a swirly stick uh -huh. and I just looked at the stick and then it just created these, yeah. created these. So this would be a standing for like the bark part mm -hmm. uh, and then just creating around this. Um, so really that's kind of where my, my mind was. Okay, we had this small tool. Mm -hmm. um, out of nature, what can I create from this? And I think the beautiful thing about the art making process is that you don't have to limit yourself. No. Like you can really just be doing it's stuff. Just, it's, <laughs> I have to say, I feel like 
I'm not sure if you recognize it, but I see more than what you're saying. Mm. Like, for example, you were talking, and I was in a trance over this one. <laughs> Those, um, the, I don't know, they're clothes, they yeah, clothes. bubbles, but <laughs> uh -huh. I'm like, whoa. Like, it's almost like a deli looking at yeah. some of the pieces, and that in itself is beautiful, that you can take people to another world. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't even Thank know. You. Like, <laughs> I'm you. just staring at this and finding something new to see each time and look at it again. So yeah. you are doing amazing stuff. <laughs> thank you, thank again, you. Guys, please do support Anaya. Go yes. to her Instagram, follow her with, uh, what's it called when people do, when they want you to work for them again? Commissions. Yeah, <laughs> commissions. <laughs> commissions. Like her page, yes. like her work, you know, give her, a, you know, a thumbs up, a like. Mm -hmm. Like this video as well. And as usual, guys, Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please do comment down below and we will have some more RTs on this channel for you. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Yeah.